First of all, I'm just, I, 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 it just feels so nice to be in a movie theater, to be with real people, real people, not on a Zoom, talking about this movie. I've been doing Zoom uh, Q&As for uh, two weeks now. Uh, so thank you for all for, for coming out here and uh, dealing with parking again and crowds again. And, um, you know, this movie, and it's been a year, man, Pushing this movie, when you have this in your, when you finish this movie and you have to wait a year for the world to see it, and you just don't know if the world will ever see it, and the fact that we're actually like starting to open things up now, and um, I don't know, it just feels like there's something about this story that Lynn has created that um, finds its way, knows when it's supposed to be released, knows when it was supposed to be made, because it was, it was long before me when this thing was first developed, and uh, and I. Re- Broadway. I was making Step Up to the Streets, my first movie. One of our dancers was in the show. So they said, um, I'm not sure if some of you are talking in here or in, or in here, but, I'll, but this sounds pretty loud, so I'll just keep going here. Um, and, they, um, and they said that you, uh, so he said, come, come check out this guy, Lynn manuel Miranda. I had no idea who he was. So I went to go see it. And I remember, because um, I was tired, I had just been shooting my movie, and I just remember being blown away because... Even though I wasn't from Washington Heights, even though I was not Latino, I grew up in Northern California in a Chinese restaurant that I recognized so many of the relationships that I knew what it felt like to come home, to smell that food, to have your parents speak to you in languages other than dialogue, but through the food, um, through... Um, I knew what Abuela Claudia was in my life, my my boo boo who showed me how to fold uh, wontons on the table. And so, to me, uh, having your aunties and uncles raise you and put their dreams and their hopes on you, uh, and for good or for bad, uh, that that tension, I knew what that felt like. And and Lynn, credit to his genius, he 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 put it in in a way that I could never put it in myself. So when I watched it, I just. Uh, I was I was just so moved in it. I never thought I would make the movie of it. I just sort of took it in and stayed with me for over a decade before Scott Sanders, the producer, and and, and at that point the 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 show had gotten um, sort of done at um, at Universal. It was set up at Universal with other directors and for like for about ten years, and then. Um, I got a call from Scott Sanders, uh, someone I'd met on one of my first round of meetings in Hollywood, and Mara Jacobs, uh, his partner in that, and they said, what about uh, In the Heights? We just got it back, and it was supposed to be at the Weinstein Company, so I had to meet with Harvey, uh, which is a whole other story. Um, And it took a a good year and a half to talk to Harvey and uh, meet him and convince him that I'm the one and sit down sit down with Lynn while Hamilton was just about to go on to Broadway, um, and which is very intimidating, knowing that this, he has this whole other thing that's happening. Um, and, uh, and I jumped into it at that moment. But Lynn and I connected. We connected because we're the same age, and we talked about growing up in an immigrant family. And I think um, when we talked about what we would dream about in our bedrooms, like the walls of our apartments couldn't contain the dreams that we had for ourselves, and um, and that even our parents had for us, that we could see something. I like, love it when Jimmy Smith says, "This is the moment where you see see things that I can't," because every generation has that, and it explains the tension, it explains the conflict, and and that's a good thing that we all move ourselves forward in some way. And so, um, when we talked about let's go big, let's make, let's not try to make like the mayor coming in to buy out the, the neighborhood and that be the conflict. Instead, let's make the conflict more internal because when you go internal, then you can make that world bigger. Then, then when, when Vanessa is trying to express what it feels like to feel trapped, she can run out onto that street and not cry because she never cries, but have fabric come over the buildings in different colors and patterns because that's how she sees the world. And that's her version of crying. And then when she runs past us, we pull back and we see we're just in the iris of her eye. And she hasn't gone anywhere. And it's not, she's barely singing there, but that's what it feels like to feel lonely and and, and trapped in that. So when we knew that that's what what our approach was gonna be, we were sort of locked together. Um, And this was before Crazy Rich Asians, by the way. I then got Crazy Rich Asians and that had more momentum. So I was like, 
I'm going to go do this movie. I have to. I, I feel compelled to do this movie. And if you guys don't wait for me, I totally understand. Um, and Lynn was like, Lynn and Scott and Mara and Kiara were said, no, you're you're our person for this. So, uh, so they waited for me to do that time. That makes the story even more incredible, because so much the theme of, of of what you've actually been able to bring to the world. I, you famously said about Crazy Rich Asians before you made it, I'm going to make this movie, it's not going to make a lot of money, but I just have to do it. And it's changed the world. Mm. It really has. And it's, it's changed Hollywood, and it's changed the perception of what is possible about Asians telling their authentic stories. So when you made this, did you know that you were perhaps also going to change the the horizons for so many people. Crazy Rich Asians has affected so many people, so many cultural creators, not just audiences, but daring people to to make things that they just didn't believe could happen before. Mm -hmm. And I suspect this movie will do the same for so many others. Mm. Did, do you have that awareness now that you've seen what's happened with another movie that was just not a movie that was going to make too much money, but instead broke box office uh, records all over the world? You know, at the time when I signed on to In the Heights, it was the same moment that I signed on to Crazy Rich Asians. So I had no, the only thing I knew was like, these next few movies I'm just going to do for myself. And again, not care about reviews or m how much money they're going to make. I told my reps, buckle up. I'm just going to make these movies, so deal with it. I'm not going to make you money for a few years. Um, so they came from the same place. And in a way, I, was, I feel very blessed that after Crazy Rich Asians came out, I didn't have to do the dance of like figuring out what I was doing next. I knew I was doing In the Heights. They waited for me. Like, there was no, I, was, I, I was committed to them. So I didn't have to go through all the bullshit that comes with people suddenly being like, oh, you, you did a great job. Here's some more stuff. Here's, I just was, was focused on doing this movie. And, and just to reiterate that I don't think it wasn't Crazy Rich Asians that changed all this. I think Crazy Rich Asians is a result of, uh, of, a, of a public, of Twitter, of people telling me, of, of, of organizations like this that got into my head to see the things that I wasn't seeing as a filmmaker and realizing, oh, I'm in a place where I can't actually do the thing that we're talking about in these conferences. Oh, what we're doing, what we're talking about in these conversations. Like A lot of people don't have that direct ability to change uh, something that's in front of us. But I just happened to be in a position. So it, it felt very um, natural to go make uh, Crazy Rich Asians and In the Heights. And I think it was only after Crazy Rich Asians where I saw, and I, and I think you used the right word, dare. It, it dares people, because again, it's not the movie. The movie's fine and it's fun. Um, it doesn't represent everybody. It can't, one movie can't. But, it, but I think it dared people to say, hey, we, we can have a crowd that comes out to see a movie. And this is not all Asians in any sort of way. This is one specific story in one ridiculous world. But we dare everyone else to go fill in the blanks and make more of this stuff. And for me, in the Heights was always the sequel of Crazy Rich Asians because that was what the lessons that I learned from Crazy Rich Asians, which was going to a theater and watching a movie with a crowd and then watching in the lobby that people didn't leave. They wanted to talk about the food. They wanted to talk about the music. People would share about the music in their own life. I know my parents were like, I know the words to every one of those songs. We used to do the boogaloo to that song, or whatever it is, the, the, the jitterbug to that it went in, in, in Taiwan. And so for me, that conversation that happened, that, that you know what that shot where the where the four friends are in the jeep at night, that was what resonated with a certain amount of people. And I was like, really, that shot? I remember being there and feeling that, but I didn't realize like a simple shot of four friends would be as aspirational to people as seeing it in the theater when um, we'd never seen that. So, and and then to see the actors then take off to the to outer. I mean, today seeing a trailer for. Uh, for Eternals with Gemma Chan as the lead of a Marvel movie. And then the advertisement for that trailer today was Snake Eyes with Henry Golding playing the lead character of that. And, and the second advertisement for that was Shang-Chi with Aquafina in it. And, and I mean, it was like nuts to be like, wow, that was only two summers ago that we did this. Um, and I, that's what I see with In the Heights, that it's not the movie, although the movie, I'm very proud of the movie and, and um, but it's, um, in a weird way, the pandemic changes the context of it. But, but, but it's, we got to make movie stars. 
because it, it goes beyond the movie. Anthony Ramos is the Will Smith of this next year. He's the new leading man of this generation. Uh, he can sing, he can dance, he can be charming, he can be funny, he can do action. He's the lead of the new uh, Transformers movie now. So for me, it's like all these actors, Leslie, uh, Corey, um, Melissa, even Olga, uh, Daphne Ruben Vega, who's already a legend, like they're going to go off and make movies and, and, and are creating paths for a lot more other actors and a lot more other storytellers. That's the power of a movie like this. And that's why it was important to be in movie theaters. That's why we held it and didn't release it last summer on streaming. Because I knew that you get Warner Brothers to spend tens of millions of dollars to have screenings like this, to uh, put it on advertisements on American Idol, to say, these people are worth your time and your money and your value, to turn off your phone and look at them in the dark and aspire to be like, a bodega owner on the corner that you pass by on the street every day and you don't pay attention to, like their dreams are worth your time. That was what was worth everything to me. And so uh, I'm just relieved that we got to the other side of this because I wasn't sure that we would be. It does remind me of what happened with Crazy Rich Asians. There was a very big offer for you to stream the movie and you all held out and should have theatrical. There is something about it. And you're very kind to say that it's just a movie and of course, there were many other factors that helped bolster the movie, but honestly, it takes someone with your eye to cast the people that you did to create those spectacular dance numbers. And also, you know, when, when Crazy Rich Asians came out, we were like, well, he's Chinese American, so of course he got all those details right. Of course he made that complex Mahjong scene, and of course he understood. But you are not from this community, and yet when, you, when you're in the nail salon, when you're in the bodega, when you're and you could, the, 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 the costumes, the, the hair, the movements, the food, the everything, the details, the, you know, that shows that you've transcended. It, you, it is not because you have necessarily the personal experience with the culture, but you have the humanity mm. to bring out that of another culture. What is yourself in in that culture and and what did you learn from these wonderful actors and mm -hmm. the and you know Lynn manuel himself of course and, and everyone else i mean you you, sp you spent a lot of time with yeah. him now i'm sure you're an honorary latinx <laughs> member yeah i mean i got the best tour guide with lynn and kiara and kiara is really the key to all of this because lynn was busy doing hamilton kiara is his best friend his neighbor he, she wrote the original play, so they trust each other implicitly, and, and I got to get in it with Kiara. And Lynn is a filmmaker himself. He hadn't directed a movie yet, but, but he is a cinephile, so he understands that it's a very different medium. And so he trusted Kiara and I to break it, to, to not have be precious about it. Not many creators can do that. Um, and the idea that, hey, we were going to shoot in Washington Heights. Like, if you're planning a musical, the last thing you want to think about is, oh, wherever we're shooting this, we have to close off four blocks, two blocks on the left, two blocks on the right, two blocks to the east, and two, like, it's an insane uh, logistical issue to do any musical number in the middle of New York City. Um, and so we, so, so, so that was probably the best decision is, is to just say, we're shooting there no matter what. Once we got there, I got to, um, it, I think because of Crazy Rich Asians, I knew the importance of those details. I mean, I knew it intellectually, but I think when you see it happen on Crazy Rich Asians, you know actually how important. And that um, the Latinx community may have different details uh, other than the food. It's the, the spices that are there. Maybe it's the placement of where the food is. And we had, and so we had to create a different process. It was, most, it was a lot about listening. And I set it up with Lynn and Kiara from, from the beginning because I gave them the option to get out of this. I said, after Crazy Rich Asians, like, I'm not sure I'm the right director for this if you guys don't think I am. I believe I am. I know I, what I can bring to this to help bridge some of these things. I, I remember seeing that show. But if you guys don't think I am, like, I'm down to back out. And they're like, no, John, you're the person. You're the person with this vision. We believe in you. So they stuck with me. And, and, and so we started a process. Like, okay, if I'm going to do this, then I've got to be able to ask stupid questions. And you can't judge me for that. And they gave me that grace to ask the stupid questions. So why are the flags important that they care? So wait, why do you guys, like, why is a blackout? I don't understand, like, why a blackout is such a big deal in New York City. And, that. and, and they were, 
like every step of the way, I could have that conversation. Every step of the way, the table was open for cast members, for crew members, for Lynn, for anyone, a visitor on set, to say, that doesn't feel right. And in an interesting way, a, a director on a movie set is the only one who can stop things and turn it completely nine degrees left or nine degrees right. Uh, I'm the only one with that power. So in a way, it was just, OK, this process is going to be different than any process that I've been through. Let's, I'm going to, we're just going to listen more. And I'm going to have, I'm not going to just say, here's the storyboard. Let's do these storyboards. It's, here's, the, here's what we're trying to create. Um, uh, what would you wear? What would you bring to this dinner party? Where would you put the, f and, and there were certain things like, you know what, the spices on this table aren't right. They would bring one from the bodega, but actually someone would have a homemade one in their back pocket. So like, all right, let's go get that bottle. Let's stop for 30 minutes, go get that bottle, uh, make it look real. Um, and, uh, oh, and you know what, the, the, the food wouldn't be at the center of a table. That's how I said it at first. I was like, no, they're at the table, they're going to grab it. Like, we don't do it that way. We put it on the side, and everyone brings it. And by the way, all the chairs, there's not enough chairs, so people are going to be on the stairs and the things. So we just took the time to have those conversations. And I, I give a lot of credit to Lynn and Kiara and the whole cast to allow me to, to give me the grace of if I didn't understand things to explain it to me. It got to a point when we were in Carnival de Barrio. And by the way, I worked with dancers, a lot of dancers before. A lot of them Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, that I, I knew as people, and I knew that they had their flags around. I didn't understand the pride that came with that until I was working on this movie. When we did Carnival de Barrio, and we're in the middle, and they're dancing, and you see people are in it. They're, I mean, you can look at any extra, any background person, they're like in it. Um, and I call cut and nobody stops. Everyone just keeps celebrating. Everyone has their flags, they're going, and they start chanting, uh, Latino, Latino, and, and New York, New York. I'm like, what's happening? And then the crew starts getting out. All, uh, they start dancing too. And Lynn is up on that fire escape that he ha is in that scene. He's trapped because there's another camera getting something up there, so he can't go anywhere. And so everyone starts to look up at him, and they start chanting, Lynn, 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 Lynn jumping up and down, and I get in it, Lynn, Lynn, I look up at him, and he's just, he can't help it, he's crying, because he manifested this. He didn't have roles for himself 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and so he wrote one. He wrote roles for his community, and now they were here making a movie in front of him with their flag in their freaking hand. That's when, like, it felt like a laser beam from Mars hitting the Earth at this one little courtyard in Washington Heights. That energy was so hyped. It was the most amazing moment shooting a movie I've ever felt. Oh, that is so touching. I, I think what's also extraordinary about your movies, you, you bring the joy, the dance, the heart, the humor, the tears, but also you do not skirt social and political issues, and it feels so contemporary. You know, bring up about undocumented immigrants and mm -hmm. whatnot. That was added, I believe, mm -hmm. to the film script that wasn't in the original, right? Mm -hmm. And how did you decide to approach those issues? And, you know, oh my God, so to my art. And, you know, how you, you it was so, it, it's very rare, I think, to to see a movie that feels so in touch with the zeitgeist of mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And that part is really extraordinary. Once again, Kiara, Kiara, Kiara. She is. Uh, brilliant. She has so much, almost too much to say, and she, what she writes is poetry, and, and, and she says things that are, in one sentence, you understand what she means. And for us, we had many discussions about what it means to be home. Home is what, what does home actually mean? And, and this bridge, this, um, this bridge that's right over this place. Um, uh, it just feels like what they were, the, every every character is in this transition. Dreamers, without talking about somebody who, who you know, and everybody has a different way of dealing with. We're in a very post gentrification world in this movie. The the show is actually much more within as 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 the block is changing. Back and said, this is. It's happening, you can't fight it, so now what are you gonna do with it? And so, every, you know, there's certain characters that are gonna fight
certain characters who are going to take advantage of this moment. There's certain characters who are going. We were playing a character who uh, saw this as their home, wanted nothing to do with walking away, wanted everything to do was to defend it. Um, it's 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 Sunny who does that <laughs> that. Um, that rap in 96,000 and talks about uh, racism and politicking and all that stuff. Uh, and so I just felt like, how can you not uh, show a kid that you're going to root for to stay here, to be here, that wants to be here, and say he, he's not allowed to be here? Um, you know, we didn't want to get in the weeds about the political part of it. We wanted to get in the weeds of what it feels like to be in that position when you love this city more than anything, he knows the best handball, uh, you know, courts, the best piragua. He knows those things. How can you deny a person who, who loves this place and is going to give them all, who wants to give everything to the future of this place? Um, that's where we started with that idea. And did that take t space in the movie? And maybe you had to take up things away from others? Yeah. And I think that we felt like it was... Um, if we could get it right, it was something to be done. So sure. worth it. So worth it. Okay, I know that you were raised by parents who had you dancing at a young age. Yeah. I want to ask something of you. I will not tap that. dance from oh, everybody darn. if that's what you're going to ask. I was going to say, just do 20 seconds of soft you. Okay, are you, are you as a parent, you have two children and a third on the way. Oh, yeah. You happen to know. Mm -hmm. How are you going to raise them? Well, I definitely, um, you know, I had my first daughter, uh, Willow, well, two weeks after shooting uh, Crazy Rich Asians, I came home and <laughs> there came a baby. Um, <laughs> so I figured babies are good luck for movies, so why not have another one for In the Heights? Why not have two? Um, so yeah, the, uh, so what I realized, you know, we're all storytellers. We love to tell stories and, and make things up. But what I realized, my daughter was like, oh, this is the most, this is the most important story of my life that I have to tell her about what the world is, about what America is, what, what we are and, and what to expect. And that really shook me of what I'm putting, what I am personally putting out into the world that I, I wanted her to know. And she, and, and, and her mom is blonde hair, blue eyed, uh, you know, from Arizona. So it's like, I want my daughter to feel so proud that she has dark hair and dark eyes. And that when she sees an Asian woman on the street, an older Asian woman, she thinks grandma. She thinks um, when she smells uh, Asian food that it feels like home, the way it feels like for me. And, and that, you, I have to work at that. I don't, we're not raising them in a Chinese restaurant the way I was, so I have to work at that. Uh, and so that is, that is something I, I think about every day. Um, and even making In the Heights, uh, we had a... Um, a little boy that was born during the production. And um, and I remember being in Washington Heights and loving this idea of people who dreamed big and took care of their families and communities. And so I named my son Heights because um, I wanted to say the word Heights every day of my life. And I wanted him uh, to hear that word every day, to know you can dream beyond your window. And, and I, uh, so I, I don't know, who knows? You know, I'm trying with my kids. Uh, they're very sweet. Um, and, uh, but I'm just trying my best to show that um, America, I was taught this place in the world. I worked hard and followed the rules. You could do anything. And, and for good or for bad, that's my parents instilled in us. And I'm very patriotic. I wore like American flags growing up. Uh, what I realized is they needed to, and, they, and that's why they um, put, took us to shows, put us in dance classes, made us feel as all-American as possible. As I got older, I, I, I definitely was like, I wish I could speak Chinese more. I wish I had more of that side. And, and I think they needed, they needed, because they went through so much coming here, they needed to protect protect me, and it worked for me. I got into the rooms. I got I could go to the country clubs and hang out, and no one would look at me differently. But at a certain point, where you have shed that, and you're like, okay, that worked for the survival of getting to this point, and now I've got to 
I've got to shed that and work on what the next point is, which is being proud of who I am and, and, and where I come from. And I want to share that with my kids in the best way possible. And the only thing I can do I'm, is tell stories that, that include that. So um, anyway, that's what I'm trying to do. Everyone, I guess, is trying. Yes, thank you. I have a feeling they'll be very proud. Are you going to name your third child after a <laughs> Alphaba? No, no we'll see. We'll see. <laughs>